Welcome back. The National Assembly's Portfolio Committee on Water and Environmental Affairs is currently grappling with South Africa's response to climate change. The committee is meeting this week with stakeholders from various departments to see what has been done so far with regard to the implementation of a climate change policy. The policy was adopted last year following the release of a white paper on climate change. The chairperson of the Portfolio Committee, Advocate Johnny DeLange, said the committee's deliberations was a first attempt by Parliament to deal with the cross-cutting issues of adaptation and mitigation. The committee wants to create a mechanism in Parliament to work in partnership with government to implement the proposals in the White Paper. The first department to brief the committee was that of Water and Environmental Affairs. The Deputy Director General for Climate Change Policy, Judy Bowman, told the committee that a number of deadlines in terms of climate change policy had to be met by October next year. In terms of, of um, the, the, the approach to implementing the adaptation work here, the focus is on development of long-term adaptation scenarios in order to project and assess the socio-economic and environmental implications of the, of the potential impacts of climate change and climate variability. And I think that is important that we're not only looking at climate change, we're also looking at the shorter term um, climate variability. It's about um, understanding what adaptation response options are available for identified sectors um, over the short, medium and long term. Um, on the basis of the latest range of IPCC forcing scenarios. So the critical issue is here that it means that we need to all be using one set of, of adaptation, um, sorry, of climate uh, scenarios. And on the basis of that for certain sectors, and the critical sectors here are water, agriculture, biodiversity, human settlements, disaster response, um, and infrastructure. Those are, those are really the key, uh, let's call them sectors, but the key areas of adaptation response that we, we need to be focusing on. Ms. Bowman said it was important that South Africa and its neighboring states should work together to deal with the impact of climate change. Given the fact that South Africa has a number of transboundary rivers, um, the, the fact that therefore within the southern African region we are interdependent. Uh, from a food security perspective, we, there is an interdependence in southern Africa from a biodiversity perspective. So there are a number of interdependencies. Sub-regional basically means SADC. SADC, southern Africa. Um, so, so South Africa's impact scenarios needs to be framed within the context of the Southern African um, vulnerabilities and an understanding of what those are. With regard to the much spoken about flagship programs on mitigation and adaptation to climate change, Ms. Bowman said the policy directive here was to implement a set of near-term priority programs as an integral part of the program. She said the implementation of these programs would require massive investments. This action, this policy direction or directive is informed by firstly the urgency of acting on mitigation and adaptation. So um, the fact that um, we can't wait for another two, three, five, or 10 years to take action. We have to act now. The fact that many sectors have already researched and have experience in implementing policies and measures uh, to address challenges of climate change, and therefore we want to uh, learn from, from the lessons and we want to build on those. So in a nutshell, the purpose of the flagship programs is to consolidate what's on the ground, to identify the barriers to implementation, to identify the potential for scaling up, um, to act on the barriers where necessary, and critically to leverage private and public sector funding, because potentially we are talking about massive programs, particularly from a mitigation perspective, when we're talking about massive energy efficiency programs, massive renewable energy, massive transport programs, this requires investment. It requires resource mobilization and investment. Um, so that, um, that, is, that is really a, a, a key element of, of, of the flagship work. The chairperson of the Portfolio Committee, Mr. Johnny DeLange, reminded members that the issue of adaptation to climate change was of the utmost importance to Africa. 
You see, for Africa, I mean, mitigation is important for everyone, but for Africa, adaptation is even more important. It's one of the issues we, we emphasize. Because adaptation is all about um, taking, uh, uh, adopting new technologies, getting new efficiencies, getting new ways of dealing with stuff. And so often it, it, uh, it's, it's, it's quite expensive. Because, you know, you, you need, move to new technologies, you move, for example, your agriculture sector to start dealing with things in, in, a, in, a, in a different way, or your energy sector to start moving from the known energies to renewable energy. So it's, it's costly, it's so on, and therefore it's not an easy thing to do, but it's absolutely vital if you want to attain sustainable development. Because clearly, there's a wonderful quote I always quote from Trevor Manuel um, that we cannot keep doing what we've done in the past on terms of technology, in terms of this and that and the other. We need to move. So that's what adaptation is all about. So it's the one area that's a little bit more in the air um, and it's also more closely linked to the flagship. Although the flagship, as Judy said, covers all three of the first thematic areas, but it's obviously closer linked to adaptation. The leader of the United Democratic Movement, General Bantu Olomisa, said one of the biggest challenges was to change South Africa's resource-intensive growth path to a low-carbon economy. Questions were also raised about the issue of carbon tax and carbon budgeting. The challenge then is that is whether it will be possible to reduce carbon emissions and still be a competitive commodity exporter and how quickly the economy will be able to shift from a resource intensive economy to a labor and knowledge economy. What structures do you have in place to try and reach the things that the general raised to reach consensus around what we want to do on carbon budgeting and carbon pricing? I mean, clearly, the, the private sector has to be involved in those processes. I mean, if we say this sector needs this budget, X, I mean, one needs to engage them. What are the possibilities? What time frames you put to it? So what structures are in place at this stage already that's doing that? Or are these structures still having been to set up? Because if you look at that last picture you put up on the time frames, which we don't have now yet, so I can't read from it, but. The, that one shows that actually, and linking again to the journal, that is actually a hell of a long period. I mean, it takes us to next year, and we still don't have anything substantial on the table. In terms of um, the, the relationship between carbon budgeting and, for example, a carbon tax, this point was raised very pertinently at the first meeting of, of this technical working group on mitigation. Uh, the meeting took place last month. And um, the, the, that technical working group has commissioned a study. In fact, the Department of, in, of Environment Affairs has commissioned the study. Um, but the technical working group has given guidance on the terms of reference for that study. And the focus of that study is to look at the complementarity or the interface between um, carbon budgeting as an instrument and the use of um, a carbon tax as an instrument in different sectors. Um, can you use them together? Um, if so, how do you use them together? Um, if not, which sectors may respond better uh, to a carbon tax or to a different instrument? And carbon budgeting might be one of those instruments. Um, so I think the, 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 there is a strong recognition that there needs to be further work. I think we will hear from Treasury um, on Thursday, as, as I recall from the program, um, their, their progress in their carbon tax process. They, the Treasury did release a first approach to a design of the carbon tax um, with, the, with the national budget documents. Um, and I understand that there is a discussion document that will be released in July, which goes more into detail on the design of, that, of, of a carbon tax and the sectors in which um, Treasury at this stage 
stage in their thinking are, um, are proposing a carbon tax might be applicable. But um, together, and I must say the Treasury is fully represented on that technical working group on mitigation, and we have in, been in bilateral discussions um, with the relevant team there. Um, and so the, 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 the question about that interface between the, the, the carbon budgeting work and the carbon tax is, is, is on the agenda and the need for a deeper understanding. General Olomisa still had a concern about the non-existence of a clear legal framework to deal with carbon credits. I, you didn't use the, 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 the term carbon credits, but you, you use it carbon budgeting. I think there's the reason why, because people want to talk about carbon taxes, they, 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 they become defensive. So it would be good to, for you to just unpack how far is the legal framework on that score by National Treasurer? If one is looking at a um, trading, a carbon trading system, which I'm, I must say at this stage, I think um, it's still too early to say whether it would be, a, uh, would be appropriate in, in South Africa. I think we have to do the work to get to that point. And I think to date, Treasury has been clear about the fact that a carbon tax is more applicable and better, more appropriate for the South African circum circumstances. Um, but at no stage has the possibility of a, um, a, a, a trading system been completely uh, uh, left out. Um, I'd say that it, 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 it's something that would need to be discussed as we go into the future once we've um, done the mitigation potential analysis. And when I say future, I mean, I think this is, we're talking about a year to a year and a few months. Um, and, we, and we have the mitigation options on the table. We understand building from the bottom up in different sectors. This is what we have already on the table. The, these are the mitigation um, uh, projects and programs already on the table in different sectors. This is what we're saying we can achieve. This is the additional that needs to be achieved and what is the best way of achieving that? What is the best instrument to achieve that? A difficult but crucial matter the Portfolio Committee on Water and Environment Affairs has to deal with this week. We now go for a break and after that we hear how members of the NCOP are not supposed to address their fellow MPs. Stay with us. <laughs> 